In this video, we'll be taking apart the Infinix GT30 Pro. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry it off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Once the back plate is pried off from the frame, it can be lifted over from the right to the left, but be careful since the flex cable for the back lights is still attached to the main board. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the cover for the flex cable. The back plate is made of plastic. The camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace that. Looking at the other side, we see the flex cable for the accent lighting on the back. 18 additional Phillips screws need to be removed. Taking a look at the top motherboard cover, we can see the dual LED flash, some antenna flex cables drawn on the plastic cover which are the light gray color lines, the NFC antenna, as well as the wireless charging coil. There is also graphite film top transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. So looking at the main board, we see the 108 megapixel main camera, as well as the 8 megapixel ultra wide. Neither of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker, as well as copper film over the shield to help transfer heat. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the other side, we see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity sensor, as well as additional copper film and thermal paste on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the copper film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Once the bottom subboard cover has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is attached to the subboard, so if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom subboard cover, and the cover itself, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you'd be able to disconnect the screen cable, and then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone.
Looking at the subboard, we see rubber gasket around the charger port, as well as these connectors, another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, and the primary microphone located here. The SIM reader is located on the other side. This is the bottom speaker assembly. The haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located here, which is held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the fingerprint scanner located next to that. If you need to replace either of those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. Now when it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs or pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. So you will need to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the size of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute. So it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 5,500 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been pried off, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the sub board. Once the flex cable has been peeled back, we have a better look at the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. This flex cable is for the volume keys, antenna board, and this touch capacitive button on this side. And this flex cable is for the other touch capacitive button. If you need to replace this flex cable, this black plastic bracket inside of the slit of the frame needs to be lifted up and pulled out, as well as the one over here on the bottom. And then the flex cable can be disconnected from the antenna board on this side and pulled out of the frame. The top earpiece speaker is located here, which is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. When it comes to this phone, if you're to accidentally insert a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes and they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.